The Magic are heading home from their West Coast trip 1-3. and three. The postseason dreams are probably out of reach at this point, if they weren't already. And the Magic have a host of the same problems they've had for a little while now. It's time to break down a difficult Sunday night loss. It's time for Locked On Magic. You are Locked On Magic, your daily Orlando magic podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And you are indeed locked on magic. Today is March 20th, 2023. Happy Vertal Equinox. My name is Philip Rossman Reich. I'm the site expert and editor over at OrlandoMagicDaily.com. Of course, follow me on Twitter at PhilipRR underscore OMD. On today's episode of Locked On Magic, it's the same problems as always for the Orlando Magic. An inconsistent scoring out outfit, especially from the bench, poor decision making down the stretch, and the little things that just don't go the Magic's way, or the little things the Magic don't quite understand. We'll break down how the Magic lost to the Los Angeles Lakers 111 to 105. We'll get to that coming up here in just a moment. But first, we want to thank you again for making Locked On Magic part of your day every day, no matter when you listen to us, whether it's first thing in the morning, whether it's right when we upload. We truly appreciate you making Locked On Magic part of your day every day. Remember, there's a great Locked On podcast covering every single team in the NBA. Just search for Locked On and the team you're looking for, the Locked On Podcast Network. It's your team every day. Today's episode is brought to you by Prize Picks. First time users can receive a 100% instant deposit match up to $100 with promo code locked on. That's prizepicks.com, promo code locked on. As is always the case, and as is important, everyone focuses on the end of this game. The Orlando Magic climbing uphill the entire way, we'll get to that, uh, climbing uphill the entire way, tied the game late. Fought all the way back. Showed that resiliency, that toughness, that perseverance that we love about this team. That Jamal Mosley consistently extols about this team. A personality trait that is going to be so important moving forward. A character trait, a team trait that, you know, as we begin thinking about next season, figuring out how to shift and change the pieces on this team, but maintain this never-say-die attitude that's going to be the biggest. That's going to be one of the biggest keys for this team. Um, you know, yes, we are going to start thinking about what happens next season, about how this team evolves, how this team pushes forward. Because we'll get to it at the end of the show. The play-in chase is probably a little bit out of reach. We'll talk about that at the end of the show as well as on tomorrow's episode of Locked On Magic. This was a. This was a, a game when the Magic showed that perseverance. And showed the qualities and traits that had made this such a great season. But they also showed why this season's ultimately going to fall short of the goal that the team has set for itself. Uh, And, you know, maybe the wildest dreams that we all had throughout the course of the season. Again, I will repeat this. This season has been a massive success for the Orlando Magic. But we can all see the flaws. And some of them are expected. But we are at game 72. There are 10 of these things remaining. 10 opportunities remaining. And there are still mistakes getting made or being repeated that don't... that we need to see progress on, to be perfectly honest. Because I know I wrote about it after the game, after the loss to Utah Jazz on Thursday. I know I talked about it and wrote about it after the loss to Phoenix Suns on Thursday. We talked a little bit about it in a win on Saturday. This team's late-game decision-making, this team's choices, ultimately are costing them wins. This is a make-or-miss league. You can live with executing a great play and missing a shot. But it's not just a make-or-miss league. It's a momentum and decision-making league. And sometimes decisions are out of your control, but repeatedly the Magic keep making mistakes that winning teams just don't make. It's mistakes like fouling a three-point shooter like they did with Austin Reeves in a tie game after they missed an opportunity to take the lead. And while he did make two of three, 
and the Magic tied the game in the next possession. Again, we're talking about a team that was chasing the lead rather than holding it. If you want to know the big difference between Saturday's win against the Clippers and Sunday's loss against the Lakers, because both games were tight down the stretch, on Saturday, the Magic were playing with the lead. On Sunday, the Magic were chasing, and they looked like a team that was scrambling and trying to climb up that hill and not playing with the poise and certainty of a team that knows they're going to execute and win. They were chasing and scrambling, and it looked that way as they were fouling Austin Reeves. It looked that way as they were struggling to slow him down. It looked that way as the Magic struggled to get good shots. We're extremely complimentary of Franz Wagner. We'll talk a little bit about his game in a little bit, but Franz Wagner taking a three with the Magic, I think it was down two. Um, taking that three with the Magic down two, there's a pull-up step back three on a night that he's 0 for 7 from beyond the arc. Not the best shot choice. And that play, compounded by the Magic being down two, compounded by Markel Fultz fouling for no reason with 33 seconds left. Shot clock still on, still a chance to get a stop. Making them chase the game even more. These decisions matter. And so, yes, look. The officiating wasn't great. Um, but the Lakers earned those foul calls too. The Magic just weren't getting calls on their end necessarily, but they allowed that frustration to beat them. They allowed the tempo, especially the fast tempo that the Lakers play, to get them out of sorts. And frankly, down the stretch, they just made bad decisions. Bad decisions that cost them the game. Bad plays that cost them the game. It, it's... I, I know I'm a broken record, and I maybe we've reached a point of the season where I become a broken record, where there's just the same thing happening over and over and over again. But that's what happened here. The Magic kept making the same mistakes. They kept making the same errors. The same mental errors, the same judgment errors, the same decision-making errors that cost them. Game. And look, you hope that the team learns from them. You hope that they fail like this. That's what this season's about. Get into these situations, fail in these situations, so you understand how to do it next time. But like, look, Paolo Bancaro fouled a shooter in the lost Atlanta Hawks way back when. Um, You know, the Magic have had troubles understanding when to foul throughout all these late games. This is a young team that doesn't quite have confidence to close, especially when they're not making shots. The Magic's late-game confidence comes from their shot-making, and when that betrays them, all hell breaks loose because until the final two minutes, the Magic played one heck of a defensive game, and then Austin Reeves just took over, just caught Wendell Carter in drop coverage. You know, the, the Lakers ran a lot of really good handoff actions to get him going downhill. He knows how to draw contact. He got to the line a lot, but I, I, I can't necessarily say that the Magic fouled a lot. Um, sure, on the play that Paolo Bancaro fouled Austin Reeves, it sure did look like he kicked his leg out to draw the contact. Jamal Mosley probably should have challenged it. Even if, honestly, even if the call was, the call stood, challenging that play is just a statement to your team that I believe in you and I'm fighting for you. And and honestly, like, I love Jamal Mosley. I think he's done a great job. I think a lot of his coaching has been looking at bigger picture items. We'll get to the bench here in a minute. Is looking at bigger picture items and not necessarily on we need to win this game. The postseason chase has been nominal and nominal in the way that he coaches because otherwise, Bull Bull wouldn't be playing. To be perfectly honest, we'll get to that in a minute. Um, You know, Goga Patadze might have been in the in the second unit a little bit earlier. Although I think I think we're starting to see some of the some of the drawbacks of of that decision. Um, It's Joel Mosley has been coaching for the bigger picture. There are a lot of times where I think he needed to pick up a technical foul just to just to spark his team, just to show his team that he's fighting for them, um, to take the heat off the players and put the heat on him a little bit. Um, and 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 honestly, like the the not challenging the Austin Reeves kick out kick out again, regardless of if it's successful or not, that's more of a statement to the team that hey, I've got your backs. I am going to fight for fight for you. Um, it's not about being right or wrong. It's about the statement to your team. And and, and I think that's something that, mo- that you know, I know mostly takes a lot of heat for some of the struggles that the Magic have. 
that's something that I think Mosley needs to kind of shift in his coaching approach. Um, you know, maybe there's rhyme to the reason, uh, rhyme to the reason there, but you know, it it's just a sign that winning isn't the first priority yet. Um, and, and I think, and I think that's what ultimately frustrates fans because we all sense this is a team that's ready to win. We all sense that this is a team that needs games like this one. Um, you know, we'll get to where the Magic are coming home here. They needed this game. They needed to go 2-2 two on two and two in this road trip. They dropped a winnable game at San Antonio. No offense, San Antonio, who's playing very, very well right now, um, erasing a 24-point 24, 24 deficit to beat the Hawks last night. Um, they needed they needed those games. And, and, and a 1-3 two and two, a one and three road trip that could have very easily been 3-1, and one, that should have probably been 2-2 two and two at the very least. That leaves the Magic in a really, really tough spot. But ultimately, while all these late-game decisions matter and all these little things matter, and they matter so much, this game was honestly lost in the first and second quarter. The Magic lost this game when they broke their starting lineup and the bench unit just struggled to score and struggled to defend. The Lakers hit six three-pointers in the second quarter alone. They took as much as a 16-point lead. The Magic were climbing uphill the entire way. And while Orlando fought... Really, really hard to get back into the game. They tightened things up themselves. Jamal Mosley made a rotation decision to put Kevon Harris in the second unit in the second half instead of Bull Bull. Um, that is certainly something Magic fans have been calling for for a while, and I won't disagree with it. Um, you know, I, I'd like to see Chuma Okeke get some minutes uh, before the end of the season as well. Um, but, but climbing uphill in this league is really, really tough. And, and Orlando just could not get themselves all the way over the hump. Every time it felt like they were about to take the lead, they'd rush some shots, they'd miss some shots, the Lakers would come back, make a shot, extend it back out to four or five, you know, within striking distance, obviously, because the Magic had the game tied late with under two minutes to go. Um, but Orlando never took the lead after the first quarter, and, and it's really hard to play in this league doing that. And that's what leaves you exposed to these late-game decisions um, and, and, and having to chase the game a little bit. Like I always say, good teams don't win close games. They avoid them, and this is exactly why. We're going to run through the box score, talk a little bit about individual performances in this game, plus update the standings. We'll get to that coming up here in just a moment. But first, a quick word from our friends at Prize Picks. Uh, the NBA back in full swing, getting the center stage of the basketball world. You got the World Baseball Classic going on. There is a lot going on in the sports world, even though it's kind of the dead season in the sports world. It's a little it's a little bit dead right now. But if you want to get in on the Daily Fantasy craze, the best place to do it is at Prize Picks. Unlike other Daily Fantasy games, this isn't like a draft. This isn't a salary cap league. This is you versus the numbers. You don't need to worry about sharks. You don't need to worry about these giant player pools. We're just hoping to make your money back. It's just testing your skill and your prediction abilities on what's going to happen in NBA games or in any sporting event, really. Here's how it, how it works. You pick two to six players and project whether they will go more or less in their prize picks projections. You can win up to 25 times your money on any entry. Prize picks offers projections on any sports that you watch, including NBA, MLB, NHL, PGA, men's college basketball, women's college basketball, women's college tournament going on right now, soccer, and a whole lot more. Entries can be made in 60 seconds or less. It's really that easy, safe, and fast withdrawals. It's currently operational in more than 30 states, including here in Florida, as well as Canada. Download the PrizePix app or go to prizepix.com to sign up and play daily fantasy sports today. First-time users can receive a 100% instant deposit match of up to $100 with promo code Locked Off. If you deposit $100, PrizePix will give you $100. If you deposit $50, PrizePix will give you $50. Don't forget to enter promo code Locked On at sign up for an instant deposit match of up to $100. All right, let's go through the box scores. The Orlando Magic fall to the Los Angeles Lakers, 111 to 105. Like I said, you know, the Magic struggled in that first and second quarter. And, and, and to me, that's where the game was lost. I know a lot of people like to focus on late game stuff. Um, we'll get the last two minute report. I, I imagine it'll still come out pretty clean uh, with a lot of correct calls. I, honestly, like some of the fouls that the Lakers got. They were fouls. I think the issue that we had was that the Magic weren't getting the same calls on their end. Despite their ability to drive, there was a blatant missed goal 10, which again, in a close game like this, does matter. Um, so a lot of, you know, again, a lot of fans, and you're not wrong, 
Late game stuff matters. I, I, I will say that with a team with the margins that the Magic have. The late game stuff matters. I think the Magic are now 12 and 23 in close games. If they win, if they're 17 and 18 instead of 12 and 23, if they're not even five, not even above 500, those five games make up the difference in making the play-in tournament. Um, so games like this, the Magic have had a lot of these kind of bad late game losses. Their late game decision making, their ability to win close games. If we're looking to make the playoffs next year, the Magic have to be really good in close games. They have to be really good in close games. That's the difference between a really good season and a mediocre season. I mean, look at the Phoenix Suns. Phoenix Suns last year had single-digit losses in close games. This year, they're about 500. That luck kind of flipped. That's how you go from overwhelmingly the top seed in the West to kind of a team that's in fourth, fifth, sixth. Like, that's that's literally the difference here. So, I I, I say late games don't matter. I, I don't like to emphasize late games as the sole reason that teams lose. And look, Magic made bad decisions. They lost this game late. They made a lot. They made a, a series of really bad decisions late in the game. That's why they lost. They also lost this game because they gave up too many threes early in the game. They gave away their lead early in the game. They had a dead period in the second quarter where they could not score. The Lakers took advantage, took a 16-point lead, and you're climbing uphill the rest of the way. That's it, 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 there, there are always multiple reasons why a team loses. Let's go through the box score, though. Let's start with Franz Wagner. 21 points, 10 for 23 shooting, over 8 from beyond the arc. Eight rebounds, seven assists. Um, I do love that Franz Wagner had, I think what most of us would say was a bad game and still flirted with a triple-double and was still kind of hovering around triple-double territory. Um, look, I like that Franz took 23 shots. I like that he was aggressive. Uh, except for that last three, I didn't hate his three-point sh- shots. They just didn't go in. It was just an uncharacteristically bad shooting night for Franz. And, you know, those are the nights when you got to know, hey, I don't have it from deep unless I'm wide, wide open. Let me attack the basket. I love that Franz stayed confident. I don't mind him continuing to take shots. He is a guy that has that leeway, that has that uh, permission to do so. He kept the ball moving. He did good things. Um, only one turnover in this game, too. Magic only had eight turnovers total, so they did a really good job limiting the Lakers' fast uh, opportunities to get out in transition. But look, Orlando took 38 threes. That's way too many for them. They got to be in the low 30s. That's that's kind of their ideal number, um, especially with how few they're making. Um that, that stuff hurts. Um, you know, again, some of it was Anthony Davis was really good in the in the paint. Four block shots in this game. Um, you know, they were a little hesitant to drive on him. Uh, they weren't getting foul calls. They only took 17 free throw attempts. Austin Reeves had 18. We'll get to him in a minute. Um, but the Magic, the Magic just the Magic's offense had some force. They're able to get downhill a little bit. They're able to get shots around the basket. They're able to attack the offensive glass. They're able to kind of do a lot of things they have to do to win games. But the, the 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 formula just didn't add up. Orlando outscored LA fifty two to thirty eight in the paint, St- outscored him seventeen to fifteen in second chance points, eight to eight in fast breaks, only three for eleven on fast breaks. So again, you just see all these missed opportunities. These you know again rushed maybe rushed decisions, bad decisions that the Magic took, um, and they weren't able to supplement themselves at the line. As good as a free throw shooting team, as good as a team this team is at getting to the line, there's still a lot of inconsistency there. And, and look, a lot of it's Paolo. Paolo Bancaro only gets to the line for four free throws. Uh, but there, the, that push that the Magic need to get to the line isn't there. And look, Franz, Franz has to do a better job getting the foul line. He was one for two from the foul line. He drives enough that he's got to figure out. He's got to learn how to take contact, how to create contact. And you know, maybe that's the skill that he needs to develop this summer more than his mid-range jumper is figuring out how to get to the line. Because if if Franz gets to the line five, six times per game, Paolo's getting to the line seven, eight times per game. You know, you're looking. That's already. 12 to 14 free throw attempts. You just need a couple guys to add you just need a couple a couple guys to add 10 and and you've got a pretty good number. Orlando is usually hovering around 30 free throw attempts. So, um Orlando has to do a better job getting the line more consistently. That's a big key of this team's identity. Um and, and look, Franz, I thought Franz played okay. Um I thought some of his shot selection was bad. Clearly shot wasn't going down. Uh so there's a lot to work on with him. Uh Paolo Bancaro, talked about him a little bit already. 21 points, 8 for 20 shooting, 1 for 4 from deep. Four for four from the foul line, six rebounds, three assists for him. Paolo had 15 of his 21 in the first half, so I got to do. I got to ask, you know, whether the Lakers were doing something schematically to get the ball out of his hands, or if the Magic just they sometimes go away from their hot players, from their players that are really carrying them. Um, I really like Paolo's aggressiveness early. He wasn't settling for his jumper. He was getting into the paint, finishing around the basket. That's what you want to see. That's when he's at his best. And Paolo's playing 
some pretty good basketball right now. The shooting efficiency isn't necessarily there. Um, but I, I, I think, again, I, I think that'll come around. I, I, I'm not concerned. Paolo's still learning the kind of shots he's going to get in the NBA and the kind of coverages he's going to see. Wendell Carter, I thought Wendell Carter played a really good game. 16 points, 6 for 11, shooting 2 for 5 from deep, 11 rebounds, played fantastic defense on Anthony Davis. Anthony Davis just 15 points, 6 for 15 shooting, 5 turnovers. Those are the games that you need to win. Holding Anthony Davis without LeBron James out there to 15 points, that's a game you got to win. And, and Wendell Carter deserves a lot of credit for how good his defense was. The Magic, honestly, deserve a lot of credit for how good their defense generally was. They only give up 52 points in the second half. Um, I thought they did just a really good job. Um, a really good job forcing turnovers, 15 turnovers for 18 points. Did a good job. You know, honestly, even though the Lakers still got nine offensive rebounds, they did really, they, 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 they cleaned up the glass after a poor first quarter. Um, they were challenging shots. They scrambled well. This was a solid, you know, back-to-back solid defensive games. Until the final two minutes when Austin Reeves, you know, hit every shot that he took. The Magic played really good defense. You know, LA still shot 13 for 32 from deep. That's that's better than normal for them. They had a really good scoring binge uh, in that first half. They struggled to make threes in the second half, and, and that's a credit to the Magic's defense, who I thought did a really good job. It's it's very rare that the Magic shoot more threes than their opponents, um, and, and that this happened to be one of those games. Marco Fultz, an okay 12 points, 10 assists for him, 5 for 12 shooting. Kind of came back to earth after the big career game on Saturday. Cole Anthony, 17 points, 5 for 15 shooting, 3 for 8 from deep. Um, I Cole Anthony really struggled in the first half. He was really important once again in the second half. And look, right now the bench doesn't have much scoring punch. Um, 26 points off the bench for the Magic, 17 of them coming from Cole Anthony. Orlando had 20 points off the bench uh, on Saturday with 18 coming from Cole Anthony. And with Mo Wagner kind of out of the rotation with the team trying Goga Batadze a little bit, um, Cole Anthony is is the only scorer off the bench. And again, that's that's why Franz's struggles really hurt this team um, because they need Cole and Franz to really carry that offensive load for this bench unit. Um, look, what's really important about what's really important about going through the playoff chase, about going through this postseason chase, is getting a better understanding of of what this team needs and, and how this team builds moving forward. Um, we can see they need they need depth. Like we like a lot of these young players, we like a lot of these players on this team, but the depth just isn't there, especially the offensive depth. Um, you know the, the the pieces just don't match up, and so you know we could see that. Okay, Orlando, you know might need a backup center. They need a backup four. You know, Bull Bull really struggled in this game. Like Bull Bull, we know we know he's not the best defender in the world. He really struggled in this game, and 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 it was clear that he just didn't fit what this team needed. Uh, in this game, um, and again, I, I I believe this. I think the Magic are thinking about development more. That's why they keep giving Bull chances. Um, if the Magic were really trying to make a postseason push, I don't think Bull Bull would be playing right now. To be perfectly honest, um, uh, you know, and I, I've thought that for a while. If if the Magic were really, if winning was really their first priority, Bull Bull would not be playing. Um, it, it's he's the good you get from him does not happen enough to erase the bad you get from him every night. Um, and look, he's got to continue improving and, and doing some of the stuff is going to help him learn, but he's really struggled to improve uh, over the course of having playing time. Um, the Magic, though, got, you know, they got to find some, some, some consistency off the bench. They got to find some consistency in their lineups. Their starters are starting to play a lot better um, after, struggle, after struggling together. You know, not having Jalen Suggs hurts for sure, uh, but, you know, again, it's, a, it's just about consistency for this team, and, and that's where this group is struggling. The Orlando Magic fall to the Los Angeles Lakers 111 to 105. It's uh certainly it's certainly a, a a a strong effort. I think the Magic are playing better now than they were at the beginning of the of of the road trip, but one and three is one and three, and at the end of the day, that's that's the that's all that's gonna really matter uh when you're in the stage of the season the Magic are at. We're gonna update where the Magic stand in the standings. We'll get to that coming up here in just a moment. But first, it's time to name our Nissan Ultimate Player, uh, our Nissan's Most Electric Player of the Week. It's brought to you by the all-new, all-electric 2023 Nissan Aria. Our Player of the Week is a guy we talked about on yesterday's show, on S- Sunday's show of Locked on Magic. It's Mark Fultz. 25 points against the Phoenix Suns, 28 points against the LA Clippers in a win. 
big plays left and right. Great passing, great leadership. Honestly, part of the reason the Magic lost Sunday is they put the ball in Franz and Paolo's hands instead of Markel's hands. I'm not always against that because those guys need to learn how to close games. But at the same time, if like I said earlier, if you're trying to win games, you're probably going to want the ball in Markel Fultz's hands. He has, he has completely shattered all expectations. He's completely shattered the myth about his injuries. He's found a way to take his step forward. And you can take your step forward, too, with the 2023 Nissan Aria. It packs pin you to your seat power and premium intelligence all in one EV. The all-new, all-electric 2023 Nissan Aria, the EV for people who love to drive. Shop now at NissanUSA.com. Today's podcast is also brought to you by our friends at Built Bar. The Built March Madness bracket is here, and we know you have a favorite bar or puff, so now is your time to make it count. Go to BuiltMarchMadness.com to vote for your favorites. You know, I'll be voting for the cookies and cream. I love cookies and cream on everything, so check check it out. You'll be voting for that bar too, I'm sure. Support your team, support your bar or puff. And when you vote for your favorite bar or puff, you will be entered into a drawing where 50 lucky Locked On listeners will get a free box of Built. Not only that, but one Locked On fan is going to get a 12-month subscription to Built to have Built's best bars or puffs delivered monthly straight to your door. you got to try Built, the best protein bar ever. Seriously, they're so amazing, you won't think they're good for you. What makes Built Bars and Puffs so good? Well, 100% real chocolate really helps. High in protein, low in sugar. Real chocolate is the big thing, is the big selling point for me. So run to, Built, run to, run to BuiltMarchMadness.com right now to vote for your favorite bar or puff and pick up a box while you're there. You can vote every day in March, so hop in and support your pick. Uh, I want to close the show and kind of preview what I plan on discussing on tomorrow's episode of Locked On Magic. Um, I am a big believer, or I'm a big... Uh, one, of, one of the things that I like to do is um, when you end a road trip, road trips are really good in measuring sticks. Um, just because, you know, you, you expect the team to struggle on the road and on these long road trips especially. And, you know, I think even before the season, knowing that we had the March and Civil A tournament trip coming, I marked this four-game road trip as we will see where this team is at. You know, certainly after the All-Star break, I looked at this road trip and said, this road trip, we'll see where they're at. We'll know where they're at. We'll know um, what's coming next, what's to come based on where they stand at the end of this road trip. Um, and look, the Magic have been treading water at best for the last month and a half, if not two months now. Uh, they've played 500 basketball. And look, that's really good. And, and, and even in this Eastern Conference sometimes, enough to help you make up ground. But it's been very clear for a while now that the Magic are starting to fall off the pace. They've, they've been unable to pick up, make up ground. And now they've actually lost ground. Orlando sits t- five games back of the Chicago Bulls at 33 and 37. Magic are 29 and 43. They are five games back of the Chicago Bulls with 10 games to play. The most wins the Orlando Magic could get now is 39. That puts their elimination number at seven. So seven Magic losses or seven Bulls wins, and the Magic will be eliminated from the postseason. So look, a, a elimination number of seven with 10 games to go. They probably have another week and a half where they're mathemat- where it's mathematically possible for them to make the playoffs. Um, there's three weeks left in the season. We're, g- we're going to be playing basketball that at least nominally has some meaning here for the last uh, until the last week and a half of the season. And, and look, I think that's a huge accomplishment. You know, to, to, to the Bulls' credit too, the Bulls have started to pull away uh, from the field. They're a game and a half up on the Indiana Pacers. Pacers tied with the Wizards at 32 and 39. Um Everyone's losing here. Uh, Wizards are three and seven in their last ten. Magic are three and seven in their last ten. The Bulls are six and four. The Pacers are six and four. So that's been some jockeying, and, and eventually we knew someone would pull away. It's looking like the Bulls might do it. Um, again, they're only one win, one win ahead of the Pacers in the win column. So, and one win ahead of the Wizards. The Magic were always on the periphery of this chase. It was always going to be about climbing over the other teams to get there. Then the deficit. But the Magic are now three and a half games back of the Wizards too. If Orlando wants to have any hope of making the postseason, they can't lose anymore. Um, the margin for error is very, very small. Um, you know, Chicago is probably looking at probably 30, I think we've all said 38, 39 wins. That's 10. <laughs> you know, the Magic the Magic cannot afford to lose if they really want to make the postseason uh, at this point. Tuesday's game against the Wizards back home. 
is especially a must win. The Magic had their opportunity to climb over the Pacers with a home game that they lost. That was way back when. Um, they have two games left against the Wizards. That's direct competition. Those are six-pointers. You've got to win those games if you're thinking about making the postseason. Um, and obviously, that dream is very, very remote at this point. Um, again, the Mag- if 38 or 39 is going to be the number, if, if the Bulls have, they have 12 games left, if the Bulls get go 500 in those last 12 games, which you know might be tough, maybe it's 38, maybe they go five and seven. The Magic are 29 wins. They've got to go nine and one or 10 and 0 in these final 10 games to make the postseason. That's that's the reality of it. And look, it was always a long shot. I'm not going to sit here and pretend that it wasn't. We talked about it as an instructional tool. I think the Magic have to keep focusing and acting like they can make this run, that they can make this push. Um, but their playoff support. Their play, their actual playoff chances are on life support if they're not already dead. Um, and this was a road trip where the Magic needed to pick up wins. They, they, they lost games on that on the homestand that they needed to pick up wins. At the end of the day, the Magic can look back at some things with regret and, and look back at, you know, certainly 5-20 and 20 start with the injuries, you know, put them in a deep, deep hole. But they're going to look back at things with regret and say, we needed to play better or we need to understand and learn X, Y, Z during these games to make this last playoff push really, really matter. Um, crazy things can happen. Uh, so they're not dead, dead yet, but the Magic put up a really good fight. You know, they've had a really strong season. It's not over yet. There's still a lot to learn, I think, in these last 10 games, but certainly that dream has has faded and the Magic have to have to start asking themselves a little bit why. Um, and, and that's going to be one of the key questions I think the Magic face here in the offseason. I want to thank you, though, for listening for listening to today's episode of Locked On Magic. Of course, find me on Twitter at philiprr underscore omd. Subscribe to the podcast and Apple Podcasts. Search your tune in him with Google Play, Spotify, Odyssey, and all of the places on the podcast to your podcast and listen listening device. For on the online magic, be sure to check out orlandomagicdaily.com. You can follow us there on Twitter at omagicdaily. Now that you're done listening to us, be sure to check out the Game to Game NBA podcast. Every moment, every performance, every result, Locked On Game to Game covers every game from across the NBA with local analysis. That only Locked On can deliver. Follow Game to Game on Locked On NBA, available on the Odyssey app, YouTube, and wherever you get podcasts. That's good to do for me today, though. I want to thank you all again for listening to today's episode of Locked On Magic. For Orlando Magic Daily and Locked On Magic, this has been Philip Rossman. We'll see you all again next time for another episode of Locked On Magic.